10 o'clock news plus what's about 15 feet tall weighs several thousand pounds and comes from italy no one seems to know but it's going into the bateson building plus gary and bill get together again to discuss the great outdoors and to offer some recreation tips plus what is the law when it comes to sexual harassment we'll tell you on tonight's news plus special report tv 40's 10 o'clock news plus with pete wilson joe conway and gary radnich Good evening. The pressure was tremendous, and so a panel of the State Board of Prison Terms decided tonight to reconsider the release of Gregory Powell, of course, one of the celebrated Onion Field killers. Powell's partner in the kidnapped murder of a Los Angeles police officer back in 1963 was Jimmy Lee Smith, and Smith was released on parole earlier this week. Here's more on tonight's decision by that board. Nineteen years ago, the kidnapped murder of police officer Ian Campbell shocked the public. It was a time when execution-type slayings of police officers were unheard of, and it prompted a novel and a motion picture on what was then considered one of the most heinous crimes on record. Two days ago, one of the killers, Jimmy Lee Smith, was released on parole. Today, at the Vacaville Correctional Facility, a three-member panel of the Board of Prison Terms, after a three-hour hearing at which cameras were prohibited, chose to reconsider Gregory Powell's June 13th parole date. Los Angeles Deputy District Attorney Sheldon Brown said they were not allowed to take part in the original parole hearing in 1977 when the parole date was set. Today was to have been a routine review of Powell's conduct over the past year, but the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office was allowed to make its case against parole, citing several escape attempts by Powell over his years of imprisonment. Uh, predicated on his deportment prior to this incident, his deportment after the incident with these escape attempts, uh, death row escapes, gun smuggling incidents, and the, uh, the 35 to 40 armed robberies that he committed after he was paroled in 63 up until the Ian Campbell incident. All the facts I have before me, I view, uh, view him as, as dangerous. Panel chairman Robert Roos said conflicting psychiatric reports helped the panel decide unanimously to reconsider. The issue of the prisoner's violence potential if he should be released to the free community. The panel is concerned about conflicting perspectives as to his ability to control himself under situations of stress. Bruce said his decision was not affected by public pressure from the, the publicity surrounding the case, but did say that public input is always considered. Our rules provide for public input, input from district attorneys, from police officers, from the public. So that's an appropriate thing, is to get input. A hearing to consider rescinding the June 13th parole date will be called within 60 days. For News Plus, this is Lonnie Wong reporting. And a very similar case tonight, citing what it calls extraordinary public outcry, the State Parole Board today voted to rescind the parole of convicted murderer rapist William Archie Fain, one of the individuals who led the fight to keep Fain behind prison walls with State Senator Omar Raines. Raines met with reporters to express his delight with the decision. There is now, perhaps for the first time, a recognition that the people of this state are no longer willing to remain silent. The murder trial of Juan Corona should get back underway tomorrow after a decision by Judge Richard Patton today to open the questioning of potential jurors to the press and the public. This morning, an appellate court to order Patton to open the jury selection process or halt the trial until a hearing could be held on that issue. Patton immediately recessed the trial and then said he decided to open the proceedings after conferring with attorneys from both sides. The judge said he closed the courtroom because he feared potential jurors would be reluctant to honestly answer questions about prejudices with the media present. Only the final arguments remain now in the Atlanta murder trial of Wayne Williams. Today, the state produced some more rebuttal witnesses to show the violent side of Williams. And once again, the defense used the accused mother to counter those arguments. Here's more. The prosecution presented its final rebuttal witness, Henry Ingram, who told the court that in May of 1981, he witnessed a fight between Wayne Williams and his father Homer in a downtown parking lot. He said Williams dragged his father out of